The asbestos issue is not a thing of the past. It, it continues to this day. We want to end this man-made disaster. So let's ban asbestos. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 10th Annual Asbestos Disease Awareness Conference. We are excited that you're here today. We have some of the most amazing speakers um, to really bring you the latest information. We have patients and family members that will tell their story, and I guarantee and promise you this will be a day to remember. As, as some of you might be new to our ADO family, and when Doug Larkin and I co-founded the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization, the principles were simple. We didn't have a place to go. We felt that education, advocacy, and community was very important. And quite honestly, we had to turn our anger uh, into something more positive. So we both had loved ones that had been diagnosed with mesothelioma. So 10 years later, looking back, we have stayed true to our mission and our vision for ADIO. So it's really exciting. I don't know if the live streaming is working. Have we had anybody check in? I got a thumbs up from Kathy in the back. So as you're here today and the speakers are presenting, there will be a conversation online. Around the world, people are dialing in on Facebook and elsewhere to indeed watch this entire conference proceeding. You can join us at, um, at, at live stream by going to our website to get the platform. If you tweet, get social. We encourage that. Once upon a time, I thought it was rude if someone pulled out their phone and began using it when I was speaking. And now I really want you to pull it out and tweet and post pictures and everything else. So we'll keep that conversation going. Um, during the day, if you have time and interest, there is a mobile app that allows you to follow the speakers, see their biographies, our sponsors, the agenda. So the mobile app will keep you dialed in to the conference as well. We have 10 countries coming together today, 10. <laughs> 30 speakers. And ADO does not pay an honorarium or travel expenses. So I ask that when you see a person wearing a speaker badge or a sponsor badge or committee, that you go up and you say, introduce yourself and thank them. Because it's through their donations of time and dollars that we're able to do these conferences. Well, Marilyn's probably blushing by now. It was 10 years ago that Doug and I and Kim stood in Washington, DC for our first conference. My husband, Alan, and my daughter, Emily, and Marilyn and her children, and there's Dr. Richard Lemon as well. We had an amazing conference, um, and Barry, I think you might have been there also. He's nodding his head, so without looking at everyone there, I'm not going to rattle off, but we've come a long way in 10 years. This was actually a press conference, and little did Doug and I know that this one-hour press conference was going to two, turn into a two-and-a-half-hour press conference. So we knew at that time that we might be on to something. Now, Jordan Zivon is um, resting, and he'll be uh, performing later on today. He's at, at our dinner. He's terrific. He's been our national spokesperson for almost nine years. His father was Warren Zivon, the Grammy-winning artist. And Jordan has done uh, congressional staff briefings, um, helped us on the Hill a great deal. But his performance and his connection to ADO makes that really patient family thing come together. And I'm, I know you'll all enjoy his performance tonight. With regrets, we have a list of folks that really wanted to be here. And one that I want to make sure I mention is Dr. Arthur Frank. Um, for, very, uh, for mixed reasons, most of them are health and family based. These speakers are unable to be here today. Um, and my daughter sends her regards from Madrid. She actually wrote you a welcome message inside your program. So we are disappointed these folks can't be here, but hopefully they'll join us on um, Skype. And some of them have video presentations. This is an exciting day. We have Admiral Lushniak that's going to be delivering our keynote speech. He's the Surgeon General who issued the third Asbestos Awareness Week res warning just a few days ago. And it's a pretty big coup to get the Surgeon General to come in here and deliver our keynote. Um, it will be very well timed, so we'll ask that all of our speakers stay with the time that has been allotted to you. Keeping with that, we have Anne in the front row. Will you raise your hand, Anne? Thank you. Anne has taken the brave and bold step to be the timekeeper. <laughs> Anne is the nice timekeeper, 
I'll be the general timekeeper. So um, every speaker is to m m watch their own time, but when you get to 30 seconds, Anne's gonna flip up one of these cards. When you get to the pink card, we mean it, next speaker, because if you run over, you take time from someone else. Each of our sessions, there are four, have a prestigious moderator. Dr. Oliver will be moderating the first session, um, and she will help facilitate, um, obviously, coordinating the, the presentations, but also the Q&A after each session. Um, Sue Vento and Heather will be doing keynote speeches tomorrow. Yay, Heather. Um, so we've got a great program. Look at this list of experts. I mean, it's, it's clap your hands. This is amazing. Now, everyone's going to want to know a little bit about those speakers. So in order to keep us on time, I ask that you use your programs, take a look at the agenda, but most importantly, every biography of a spe speaker or ADO leadership is in your program. So Dr. Oliver doesn't have time to read bios for everyone, and neither do the other moderators. So please use your program to, to familiarize yourself with these amazing people. Well, and our honorees, this list is impressive. Um, I'm not gonna read them off for the sake of time, but tonight at dinner, we are going to be able to acknowledge and recognize these amazing people with awards. We also have spe special recognition awards again. Um, Emily Bankhead the, uh, was our diamond donor. She actually, for those uh, patients and family that went on the monument tour, that was hosted by Emily Bankhead. And we have other gym donors here today as well, and you'll see them in your program. Um, in, in this audience right now, I, I know we have Jill and also Heather, um, but we've got some great financial support from families who recognize what ADO does is very important, and to honor the memories of their loved ones or possibly someone's fight, they do make these donations, so it's really wonderful, and we thank them. Our platinum sponsors and our silver sponsors allow us to um, help some of our patients and families come to pay for the videotaping, some of the food you're eating. So it's thanks to our sponsors that we're able to do this conference. So Motley Rice, Simmons, Greenstone, Panettiere, and uh, Bartlett, as well as our silver sponsor, Early, Lucarelli, Sweeney, and how do you, Barry, how do you spell, pronounce Chris's last name? Thank you very much. You must know him in, in the Connecticut area. So put, our, put your hands together for our sponsors, please. <laughs> These three firms have stepped up to the highest giving level, the highest giving level. The money that has been donated for this conference allows us to work throughout the entire year. And it is significant amount of money for ADIO, and we thank them. They don't ask for anything. We don't make legal referrals. They give this because they feel it's the right thing to do, and we are very grateful. They, have host, they will be hosting some of the events during the, the weekend. We had a dinner last night, as well as there'll be a lunch by Motley Rice, and Simmons did our dinner. And of course, we have brunch by Simon Greenstone Panera and Bartlett as well. Magna Legal Services, we have Kathy in front of me. She's actually gonna be taking down, as a court reporter, all of the uh, uh, speeches, so we can then t turn it into a book. So for somebody who's not able to be here or wants to share a presentation, we're actually gonna have the full text copy of each presentation, so Kathy and Lena, we say thank you. Um, during the dinner tonight, you will be given um, a book that has about 75 stories in it. Um, these stories are from patients and families, but it really, I think, helps to center all of us as to why we're doing our work, because every story matters. Every life has been changed forever. Ellen, I don't know where Ellen Coast is. She might be there. Stand up, Miss Ellen, and then Tony Rich. We have two great volunteers. Tony's changing the lenses on his camera, and Ellen's at the door. So if you have specific conference questions, those go to Ellen, obviously. And step in front of Tony's lens, because he's a great photographer, and we want to be able to share um, all of the photos from this weekend. Our committee is uh, all with volunteers. We don't have a big office, and we don't pay for staff. So this shows you a little list of some of the folks that have made this happen. Um, and Herman Hamilton, I know you're watching today, and so is Barbara McQueen, and we want to especially say thank you for all of your work and help. 
Sue Ann Taylor in the back with Zeal and her team has actually done some interviews during the day, um, actually yesterday. So we're capturing story and vignettes all the way through. So big shout out to Sue Ann and her team. Yep, shout out. Um, conference housekeeping. There will be four sessions. Obviously, they're, they're marked in your program. Um, the, the door that we will be using to reduce the um, noise will be just number F. Um, you can see that lunch will be from 11.35 to 12.35, and dinner is at 6.30. Uh, if it turns out that you want to get a ticket, Ellen is someone who can take care of that for you as well. And uh, brunch will be at 9.30 on Sunday, which I really look forward to having you join us. So um, it is my great honor to introduce my friend and the prestigious, fabulous, wonderful expert, Dr. Richard Lemon, who's going to welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. It's really a pleasure to be back to the 10th anniversary. Uh, this is really a celebration of 10 years of advocacy work and awareness work that the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization has been doing. This organization, as Linda said, has grown from a very small meeting 10 years ago here in Washington, D.C to what we have today. And ADAO is known around the world <clears throat> as a premier organization for the victims of asbestos-related diseases. We're not a scientific organization, although we have a scientific meeting today, and we have one every year. But what we are an organization of are people helping people that have asbestos-related diseases or loved ones that have asbestos-related diseases. And we welcome all of you that are in that category to this meeting today because it is up for you and because of you that ADAO exists. I also want to welcome you to this meeting on behalf of Dr. Arthur Frank, who is the co-science advisor with myself for this organization. Both Arthur and I have been working with Linda and Doug and this organization over this 10-year period. So while this is an anniversary celebration of the 10th anniversary, it is also the inaugural celebration of the next decade of work that we're going to be doing. <laughs> So I'm not going to take up any more time because you're going to hear far too much of me over the next day and a half. And I was just kind of on the light side thinking when Linda said Ann was going to flip up the sign when the time was over and if you didn't listen to her, she was going to take over. But I won't tell you what she's going to flip up. <laughs> 